I'm I would be considered a millionaire at this point in time, you know, technically, which I I'm not really I'm not really gone on that term anymore. Like I used to be so obsessed with being a millionaire or whatever. But when you actually start making money, you realize like there's so many different things you were told about money that are not true. Um, like for example, like having a million pounds in your bank account would be the worst thing ever, simply because a bank only guarantees a hundred grand of your money. So it's even little things like that. Like you don't know when you don't have money. Like when I didn't have money, you start to make money, you start to realize, you know, like all these people flashing watches and cars and everything else, that's like motivating like 15 year olds, you know. Whereas the real stuff for me anyway that motivates me is like, you know. Whenever this all goes away, just going out and playing golf with my friends, you know, just getting up for a want in the morning, you know, actually impacting other people. These are the things that uh, bring actual joy and are, are actually kind of cool, you know. Welcome to the Viral by Design podcast with Dave Rothero, where we get inside the minds of today's leading viral marketers as they reveal the exact strategies they use to build brands, products, and campaigns that are magnetic to customers, spread like wildfire, and seize the attention of millions. This is Viral by Design. So welcome to another episode of Viral by Design. I'm very excited today to be joined by Stephen Summers. He's the co-founder of Marketplace Superheroes, which is an online education and services company that helps people all over the world how to uh, learn how to sell their own products globally on Amazon from complete scratch. Together with his business partner, Robert, Stevens won over five Two Comic Club Awards for Marketplace Superheroes, which is now an eight-figure business. And the guys have also helped over 7,000 people to create multiple income, income streams online. So Stephen, thank you so much for joining us, man. Great to be here, Dave. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we dressed the same today. So that's great. 100%, man. You've got to call it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, what's your backstory, man? How did you get into Amazon? Amazon's like this huge like beast. How did you get started? Yeah. Well, like a lot of people watching or listening, I started out with absolutely no clue what I was doing. I'm 34 years old now for some context. And when I got into this whole thing 11 years ago, um, I was just like searching around, buying lots of different courses, trying to figure out how to make some money on the internet because you know, that was my dream. And I just wasted so much time and effort buying lots of crap. And I got to a point where I was just like, I need to figure out how I can learn from someone who knows what they're doing, because I was working in a job, trying to make it in the music industry, like we mentioned to you before we started today, which didn't work out. And I was a data processor. And I was uh, just to say, trying courses, nothing really working out. And then really, I shared with a lot of my network, look, I want to sell products on the internet because I wasn't an expert in anything. I, I'd never got any experience in like, you know, I, I didn't run ads like you, you know how to do on Facebook, right? And that wasn't even that popular back then, really. Well, it, it was there, but not like it is nowadays. So I just thought if I sell products on the internet, I don't need to be an expert. It's not like a weird MLM. I can sell them on sites like Amazon, eBay and go from there. And so I wanted to be, I wanted to get into drop shipping because like a lot of people have thought, oh, there's not really very much money going in. It's low risk, et cetera, et cetera, which is true, but also very untrue as well uh, with drop shipping. And so I met this guy, Robert, uh, through my aunt. Uh, she heard I was interested in starting a business. And this guy, he had two warehouses, he had lots of staff and they were selling on eBay and Amazon in the UK at the time. I was like, this is, this is, I've hit the jackpot here. This is fantastic. So I went up to the North uh, Northern Ireland and I saw this operation. It was freezing cold, dusty old warehouse, a couple of rats running around, but I really liked it. I thought this is cool. You know, there's real products being sold to real people here. Uh, they were all products that Robert was putting his own brand on and selling. So we call that private label selling for anyone who doesn't know. And I just thought this is great. This is my, this is my thing. So long story short, I quit my job. I moved in with my aunt into her spare room. And I just started working with Robert every day for free. I wasn't getting paid. And I was just watching what he was doing, asking him questions all day, learning the ins and outs of selling on these marketplaces. And um, did that for about nine months. And on the side, I was selling some of his secondhand stuff on eBay. So I was teaching myself, you know, HTML, CSS to make my listings look nicer, teaching myself some copywriting and stuff like that. So then I could make my listings stand out. I was making money and uh, this was all exciting. And I was reading business books at the same time. And the, the book I was reading that really changed my life was The e Myth Revisited by uh, Michael Gerber. It's a great book for anybody who's not read that. I started learning about systems and stuff like that. And I looked at what Robert was doing. 
And I realized, you know, there was no real system behind what they were doing. They were just selling lots of different products on these different marketplaces. So we started talking about this and we started to refine our research process for finding products, we started to refine everything. And we realized, you know, we don't actually need these warehouses. We can send some of our stock to Amazon, put it into their warehouses in all different countries, not just the UK. And we can just sell our own brand of products in multiple countries at the exact same time. And so to do that, we actually needed to get rid of like 95% of the products that Robert was selling. Uh, we had to find all new stuff in different categories in Amazon. And that's what we did. And long story short, 12 months after that, we had turned everything around. We got rid of all our warehouses, rid of all the staff. It was just the two of us. And we were doing about $1.2, $1.6 million uh, a year in revenue. About a 30% of that was net profit before tax, just to give some profit numbers as well, which a lot of people don't do. Brilliant. And, uh, you know, it was good. Life was nice. We did that for a while, a couple of years, and went to Disneyland and all the rest of our families and had fun and did it, the, kind of did the internet thing. And then, you know, a lot of people were teaching Amazon, 2014 this is now. And a lot of the stuff they were teaching was not good. And I felt Robert, with 20 years experience, had a lot to share, had a lot to give, I knew obviously a good bit too. I was learning and I was doing it with them, but I was learning the more uh, how to do like, you know, webinars, how to do direct response marketing, how to do that. So we just said, look, let's give it a go. Let's start teaching it. And I suppose long story short again, it's now, uh, you know, 10, 11 years later from when I started. So, uh, and we've now got over 8,000 members, you know, won all those awards and uh, we have a freight company now, a software company, all for Amazon sellers. So it's been a crazy journey, but here we are. That's awesome, man. And, you know, I've always got a lot of respect for people who've actually done the, the nitty gritty hard work in the factory floor. Like, I've got experience that myself and I know how difficult it is. And like, you know, seeing people kind of pop up on the internet, they got about a month's yeah. experience or they took somebody else's course and suddenly they're an expert. It's like, oh, really? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Exactly. And I, I think that's what helped us stand out as well. Like, because like you, you know, it's like you, you have that perspective because you've actually gone and done it. And, uh, you know, Robert's made all the mistakes. I've made mistakes with Robert. And that's that's what people pay for. Like they want your perspective. And I think the other side of it too is what really distinguishes us nowadays is that we're not just like a course or something. I think that's something that we can all learn if you're selling information currently. Like you have to transform your business into more of a service-based business and your information, your coaching it kind of feeds that part of your business and that's your more long-term. So our freight company will ship about 6 million items this year uh, from China across to uh, US. We've warehouse in UK, warehouse in Australia and Canada. So if you want to call it like, you know, that's the real business quote unquote uh, behind the, the information, you know? That's awesome, man. So in terms of Amazon itself, like obviously there's this like exponential, like, movement into it because you've got all these people making courses and therefore it's been seen yeah. as this opportunity and therefore there's the risk as with most things on the internet that it's going to become saturated what do you yeah. what's happening now in terms of what's different and is this still opportunity for people getting started yeah i mean uh, when you break down the numbers of amazon it's really interesting you know before the pandemic hit <clears throat> about 10 to 12 percent of, of total retail sales were made online and of that 50 percent was made on amazon so they were dominating the e-commerce space before we had a coronavirus and stuff like that. Coronavirus hit and the rate of adoption in e-commerce jumped by about five years within you know a matter of months. So there's been a big scramble to get on, on the internet for a lot of companies. And even Amazon, you know, whenever this hit, like I remember they shut down their, their fulfillment centers for a little while, which was kind of, you know, a little bit. Oh crap, you know, because it was it was a bit unnerving, but it was all because the demand was just so insane. They had to totally just focus on essential goods only. And so certainly there is a, like unbelievable amounts of opportunity in Amazon. However, most online courses, they all teach the same thing, which is go after the most competitive products and the most competitive niches. Uh, you know, you're relying solely on kind of like niche keywords in order to be found and you're really competing at a level that is that is doable, but is very tricky. Uh, what we do, we go a different way completely. We sell boring, non-trendy, non-exciting products, and we only are interested in making a small number of sales on those items, and we want to sell them in multiple countries at the same time. And that's the big difference. Most online course creators as well, a few things on that. Number one, they actually don't teach you how to sell in more than one country. 
because they don't want to get involved in the complexities of like, you know, having different entities in different countries and stuff like that. Thankfully, if you're from the UK, Europe, it's really easy to sell the likes of the US. Whereas if you come from the US over here, not that it's hard, it's just there's a few extra steps that you have to take. So we deal with all that. Like we have a legal department, we have an accounting department. So I think that's the other side of it too. It's like, if you want to take this seriously, you have to either build up these relationships or work with someone like ourselves that has them. So there's that too. There's a very real infrastructure required in order to be successful, especially in the logistics area. And that's something that, you know, is really important, something to consider if you're looking to get into something like this. Like you can't, the days of just ordering some stuff from China and sending it into Amazon are, are over. And the reason they're over is because Amazon are not, uh, they're not, a, they're a fulfillment center, they're not a warehouse. So that's another mistake people were making, right? They would send 2,000 units or 500 units or something into these warehouses. Amazon would store them. And then they start getting hit with long-term storage fees because the items weren't turning fast enough. They were sitting in Amazon's warehouses, you know, not that long, but Amazon just doesn't want it sitting there. Whereas now Amazon have changed that and they've put in this thing called inventory performance index, which basically just means you can't just send in all your stuff. So you need to have a partner that has a warehouse or have your own warehouse before Amazon. So a lot of people are kind of say, I'm out at that point. And that's fine. But really, like we've made it really simple for our members. It's it's really easy. You just plug into what we have. And, and that's been good for us because now we have a whole other warehousing and uh, shipping business that you know we didn't have before. And so there's that. And I would say certain products are saturated on Amazon, and meaning like there's so much supply and there's not enough demand on the platform to meet the actual supply. But what you'll find is when you're looking at the more niche, you know, non-competitive items, weird items. Uh, th there's really not that level of supply, but there is a level of demand. And we have a whole system of how we like validate a market, how we look at the demand and stuff like that, which, you know, it's kind of complex. We have a little software tool for that, but long and short of it is there's loads of opportunity, but in my opinion, you've got to be in these more, uh, I would say, uh, long tail type product categories and niches in order to succeed simply without having to get into more complex strategies like, you know, driving traffic off of different platforms other than Amazon and stuff like that. I really like that strategy, man. And, you know, it's what you said about going wide geographically instead of going long just in one, lo in one location and trying to do volume is, is really, really smart. And I can see how there's a, bar a kind of psychological barrier to entry there. It, it brings to mind a conversation I had with a, um, a friend here in the UK who he just started supplying his products, a food products into, into retail. And when the when the, the maths stacks up in regards to that, it works out if you have a product of like a you know a decent five or ten dollar value that you supply broadly to like you know one big chain, they only need yeah. to sell two to five of that item per chain every single week, and suddenly you've got a multi million pound business like overnight. Yeah, that. that's right, and and it, it's great you bring that up. We've got a thing called a rule of five, which I think really uh, you could apply this to different businesses as well, but in the Amazon kind of business. How we look at that is if you have five items, you sell them in five different markets at the same time, five Amazon countries, you're making five sales a day per product per country, average net profit of $5. Again, it doesn't have to be five, it could be 10, it could be three, it's just a framework. But if you look at that five by five by five by five over a 30 day period, that's a net profit before tax of $18,750, you know? That's just for five items because you're selling, you're multiplying the markets, and therefore, you're multiplying uh, the, the tune to profit as well. So you're right. Like, I mean, and it's it's when you start simplifying business in general like that, it's the same for anything, like Facebook ads, whatever, different ad sets performing different ways. Like, you start to realize, like, if I have lots of middles, I can actually achieve a lot with that. Whereas I think, like, we're in this sort of, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Or I'm going to be like a baller. So all of a sudden, like, you've got to make it big quickly or you're like a loser these days which is just such a lot of nonsense. Like, I mean, most people, it takes them time to build a business. And then when you build it the right way, you actually stay in business for the long term. Whereas these other things where it's it's quick, uh, it's also quick to come down. And I think Amazon, selling on Amazon is a really good example of a really good, um, simple business model that's not without its cons. You know, these are Amazon's customers, for example, you know, things like that. But if you actually leverage it for what it is, a marketplace with millions of customers. You're smart about your research. I mean, every single day, they have, we have people reporting. I did my first grand uh, this month. I did my first 10 grand. We had one couple today, uh, Arun and Maya from the UK, actually. 
uh, they were working, he was working in an airport not so long ago. They're going to do about half a million this year in revenue, you know, and these are total beginners. So like, it's, it's great, but you've got to know what you're doing. And also you got to invest money. You know, it's about uh, in dollars, it's about $800 uh, to $3,000 to launch a product. So in the UK, about 600 pounds, about two grand, two, 2,200 pounds ish to get yourself launched. But you know yourself, like no matter what business you're in, you have to put money in. And I think we've got to get to a place where, you know, we're not just trying to go, well, what's the least I can start a business with? We should be saying, well, if you went out and started a traditional business, like a cafe or something, there's people getting loans for 80, 100 grand to start something like that. I'm not saying you should do that with an Amazon business, but I'm saying like, you know, it's a very real business and you should really be looking at learning how it works. And if it makes sense to you, then you got to start putting money into it because the return on your investment is great, you know? Yeah. It's interesting, though, isn't it, how people's psychology kind of shifts when it comes to an online business? And I think, you know, a lot of it is, is, is like propelled by the like the inst instant gratification nature of like people on Amazon, uh, on Amazon, people on Instagram posing in front of Lamborghinis yeah. and saying, oh, yeah, I made it so simply, like it was easy, et cetera, et cetera. But, like in reality, they just hide that thing and the <laughs> guy's freaking broken. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's a load of balls, that is, you know, yeah. and I mean, even with myself, you know, like I used to. I'm sure maybe you were the same, maybe you weren't, but I used to be like, oh, I'm going to have millions in the bank and blah, blah, blah. And like this point in time, you know, I'm con I would be considered a millionaire at this point in time, you know, technically, which I, I'm not really, I'm not really gone on that term anymore. Like I used to be so obsessed with being a millionaire or whatever. But when you actually start making money, you realize like there's so many different things you were told about money that are not true. Um, like, for example, like having a million pounds in your bank account be the worst thing ever simply because a bank only guarantees a hundred grand of your money so it's even little things like that like you don't know when you don't have money like when i didn't have money you start to make money you start to realize you know like all these people flashing watches and cars and everything else that's like motivating like 15 year olds you know whereas the real stuff for me anyway that motivates me is like you know whenever this all goes away just when i'm playing golf with my friends you know just getting up for a want in the morning, you know, actually impacting other people. These are the things that uh, bring actual joy and are, are actually kind of cool, you know? 100%, man. I couldn't agree more. One of the, one of the biggest things for me lately is, is growing a team of other real humans and like helping them to make a place in our team and where they earn their money and they look after their families. And it's like, wow, we're really building something real here for people, you know? That's like really gets me jazzed. Exactly. Really. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, we have about 75 people now in our different uh, teams. So in our group, you know, between our freight company and the software business and services business and education business, Amazon partners and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's great. You're right. Like, you know, I, I think that's a really important thing, seeing other people develop see, and also seeing the project develop as well, you know. And then, of course, above all that, for me, it's like seeing the clients go out there and have success uh, because it's all been good that myself and Robert and our partners, we're doing well and we're investing more into the business. But if everyone else is not succeeding, well, then we're full of crap, you know, whereas seeing people posting in, you know, I can't believe it. I'm a total beginner and I've, I've got my first, whatever I'm doing $800 a day in sales, whatever it is, you know, that's, that's great. And that's really, really, um, Really great. Whereas, you know, the, the sad thing about the internet now is if you posted up, you did $800 in revenue in a day, there'd be people out there and be like, oh, that's not very impressive. And you're yeah. like, well, hold on a second. It's 300 grand a year in gross revenue, about 100 grand in net profit before tax on an Amazon business, which is fantastic. And then, oh, that's, that doesn't really sound like a lot. It's like, well, hold on a second. How much have you done? <laughs> it's like, yeah. you've done zero. So I think as well, it's, it's like we have to come to a place where like the opportunities out there are amazing on the internet as a whole. Cause obviously we do a lot more than just selling Amazon. We have a coaching business with the freight company and all that jazz. And I think when you realize what's actually possible out there, you, then you understand it's all about just breaking it down into smaller manageable chunks and then achieving those goals along the way. And then understanding that when you start making money, Initially, it's really exciting. And then you start to realize, if I take all this money, I'm going to pay like half of it back to the tax man, the tax woman, the tax person, whatever you want to call them. So really what I've got to start to look to do is find, like you were saying, find these like other motivators outside of just money. Uh, because if you're chasing money forever, you you definitely will not be happy. And I know that's a cliche, but it's true. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, man, 100%. 
Hey, going back to the products, because I'm really intrigued by what you're saying about, um, because what I'd like to do is map out like what somebody can experience when they start selling on Amazon. And the first, the first place that sits with me is like, what is a, a typical product that sells really well? Because I know that I haven't, I've sold like really unique products in the past, which, which get massive attention on like uh, on global press, et cetera. And if I was to start a business now for in terms of like a, a sustainable global business, then I would be going after something boring, right? Because it's the company, especially in terms of subscription, it's companies like Dollar Shave that, that, that were sold for like yeah. a billion dollars two years after. They're just selling uh, consumable items that everybody needs. So is that the kind yeah. of stuff that you're going after when you say boring? Is it just consumables, things that you know yeah, are like? Um, yeah, we don't really define it necessarily by what we do consumables or anything like that. We we when we typically don't do consumables, funny enough, uh, simply because on Amazon, like, it, it can be a great strategy. There's no doubt about it. But you know, you are on a platform, you are in a marketplace, so you're kind of relying on the fact that they will come back for your exact item, which may or may not happen. So we don't really look at that kind of rule. We look more so at, I mean, a very there's a lot of different ways to do this, but a really simple process that I I look at and I do on YouTube a good bit is you can look at hobbies, all right? So let's say drawing. I don't know. I'm just picking one out of my head, and then you can go like drawing accessories. And what you start to realize is there's all these accessories to the main thing of drawing that are out there that are selling. And you can start to really drill down into more niche items. So a good example of a this would be like a drawing mannequin, right? So a drawing mannequin is like a, a little wooden figure and you can move it around to like <laughs> different uh, uh, poses and you can like draw those poses, right? So I would never come up with that. So like the market has to tell me what did people are buying right now. So we're following this idea of what are accessories to main things. Sometimes we sell the main thing, but a lot of times it's an accessory. So what are those things? And then we look at some different rules. So let's say a drawing mannequin, for example, or wooden drawing mannequin, as it would probably be done as. I said it was 400 results came back when we searched that on Amazon and be like you know, one of 400 results. We want that to be less than a thousand. Number one, that's and that's not a guaranteed win or anything. If it's four hundred, it just means those keywords were in in four hundred or less listings. So that's you know not like there's in ten thousand different listings, right? Because we uh, follow this idea of emulating the customer. When a customer comes to Amazon and they type in keywords, what do they actually see when they type in the keyword that you're actually looking to? To, to research and sell. So that's kind of the first piece. Then what we would do is when we search uh, wooden drawing mannequins, we would look down and look at the BSRs, the best seller ranks. We have a little tool, little tool, it's not ours, called DS Amazon Quick View for Chrome. Uh, you can just install that and it will just show you up all the best seller ranks when you search something on the search page. And really what we want to see there is how big is the market? And how we do that is we say, if it's less than 50,000, and let's say in, in most categories, home and garden or whatever, and they change name all the time. Well, if it's less than 50,000, we would say it's in range. Now, if all the items are like 40,000 plus, that would tell us that the market's small because 50,000 is the upper limit of what we want to look at. And therefore, and this is in the US, by the way. So anything down from anything at 40,000 plus, it's a small market because it's up near the upper end of that. Whereas if we start seeing draw mannequins, there's one at 1,000, there's one at 6,000, and then the rest of them are up at 40,000, we would determine, okay, well, there's two products in there. They're doing really well. That would tell us that the market's a little bit bigger. And then we start to look up, well, why are they doing better than everybody else? Is it their keywords? Is it their images? Is it their descriptions? Is it their bullet points? So we're looking to reverse engineer essentially why some products are doing much better than others. The key thing then that I, I, I'm, I'm kind of talking about here is the product has to be very clear. Uh, and with these different rules and we score stuff in our software tool and it will give us a score as to how good the opportunity is. But basically like the problem with most courses in this area is they'll have you selling lots of different kind of random stuff. So like you would have uh, earring backers. So these are little backs of things you put on an earring, right? Now the problem with earring backers is it's not like a wooden drawn mannequin because there are literally, you name it, there's thousands, tens of thousands of earring backers on Amazon, right? There's like different colors, there's hypoallergenic ones, there's this, there's that, there's the other. So what a lot of people are doing is they're hoping that hypoallergenic black earring backer 
is like what they're going to rank for essentially. So they're trying to long tail rank in really big competitive categories, what we, uh, niches. What we want to do is we want to go into smaller niches. The product is really clear. The offerings are not very good. And we can come in there, drastically improve the offer, add in bonus items, stuff like that, improve the listing dramatically as well, get that product into multiple countries. And then, you know, we will pick up our sales that way. And we've got like so many people selling so many random things, you know, like seed boxes and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's uh, it's crazy. And we see it all because it's in our they're in our warehouses. And it's it's just fascinating when we see the different all the different niches and different types of things people are selling. Like there's all kinds of things you wouldn't believe. That's very cool, man. I love that you you kind of solve that uh, that problem of warehousing as well. Like that's actually part of the course, as opposed to like, oh, here's the information, you go and do what you want with it, kind of thing. Exactly. You know? That's great. Exactly. Yeah, I've just gone. Uh, I've seen courses where people will say, "Well, what do I do with this IPI thing? I don't have a little warehouse." And they're, "Oh, I'll no, just I'll see you next week." You know, it's that kind of thing at the moment. So, yeah, yeah, try your mom's garage kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, at what point or do you ever then transition off Amazon? Because I know you know something you touched on before is this is Amazon's customers. Like you never, unless you. Had, and I've seen yeah. some stuff I've got in the, in the mail from Amazon. There's a little box saying, "Hey, like you know, why not check out our website, etc." Yeah. Do you ever kind of advise that, like having a, a, a self-sustaining store where you can start to, to build yeah, your own? Yeah, sure. Like a, a lot of our, I would say most of our members don't want to have their own store. And that's something that, you know, to you and I, that might seem like an odd uh, thing to think because we're we're in different businesses. We're used to customer acquisition and stuff. But the thing to understand is a lot of people starting out, like they don't have all these skills. They don't understand Facebook ads like you do. And they don't understand uh, sales funnels. They don't understand all of these, you know, Facebook pixels, all these random things, right? That feel random if you're a beginner. It's, it's overwhelming, you know, whereas with Amazon, it's a much simpler route to market. As I said, it's not without its faults. So we have had many members who have taken some of their best products that have done well, and they want to build a store around that category and then scale it out. We've had people do that, but a lot of our members, they, they don't do that. They just want to keep selling more products. They keep on bringing in more and more and more products. They want to have as many as they can. If they can have a hundred different products, the way they look at it, and the way I would look at it too, and our different partners, we look at it. Uh, we, we just say, look, we have hundreds of different items. And so if one goes, well, we still have 99 more, we have 49 more, you know, and then we just keep, we keep our place in those and adding it in. So as I say, that is that the perfect business? No, but is it a great business? Really good business, yeah, absolutely, and and it does very well for people. But I would say uh, we've had some members that have gone the way of building their own store, driving traffic off of different um, different platforms like Facebook and YouTube. But I suppose, like anything, you have to be mindful there of your acquisition cost. You have to be mindful there of building a back end in that business, because as we all know, like if you don't build a back end, especially in e commerce, your acquisition cost is probably going to equal your uh, your sales price. Therefore. Dollar Shave Club, companies like that. That's why I suppose these subscription box type companies have all popped up because, you know, the acquisition of the customer might be 